Well, the issue is, okay, we're going to talk about ethnicity, we're going to talk about racism, but are we really going to ask students as young as 11 and 12 about gender and gender identification? Uh, Lauren used the word concern. Uh, a lot of the parents are saying this goes beyond the pale. This is outrageous that we would be asking these kinds, again, under the uh, umbrella of equity, that we are asking students as young as 11 and 12 these kinds of questions, especially as it relates to gender and gender identity. Uh, the survey, sixth graders through Poway High School students. Poway notified, meaning the district, uh, parents that there would be 31 questions probing students on questions relating to equity, uh, racism, uh, just general conversation, but again, uh, the crux of most of the parents who have talked to us about, this is outrageous to be talking about gender and gender, uh, gender identity when these students are only 11 and 12 years of age. The email went out on May 5th, the survey currently going on, May May 9th through the 3rd, again, uh, being couched as uh, this is just kind of an equity discussion and we want to know your feelings. But there are a lot of specifics here. We're going to give you just an example of some of the questions. The very first one, how often do you spend time at school with students from different gender identities? Sexual orientations. Then we get into races, ethnicities, or cultures. How often do you have classes with students from different gender identities? racial, ethnic, or cultural backgrounds. At your school, how often do students from different gender identities, races, ethnicities, or cultures hang out with each other? How fairly do adults at your school treat people from different gender identities, races, ethnicities, or cultures? How often do teachers encourage you to learn about people from different agenda, uh, gender identities, races, ethnicities, or cultures. How confident are you that students at your school can have honest conversations with each other about gender identities? That was specifically related only to gender as opposed to what we've related to you so far. And again, how well does your school help students speak out against racism? All right. That's, uh, you know, in terms of the parents who apparently have contacted us, uh, all right, we're talking about racism and equity, but the idea that sixth graders are being asked about gender and gender identity, uh, a lot of the parents are saying it goes beyond just head shaking. Now, we want you to know we did reach out to two school board members as well as the superintendent's office, and they did get back to KUSI. We were told there was a lengthy meeting going on and no one would be available, at, but at least uh, the district got back to us. And as Paul said, the conversation about this is going to continue as we throw it back to Paul and Lauren in the studio. Ed, Ed, thank you so much because I believe our next guest is going to piggyback right off of what your live shot there and continuing the conversation. I'm joined by the executive director of California's Californians for Equal Rights. The found uh, the foundation, Wenyan Wu, joins us now. Thank you very much for joining us at this early hour. Were you able to hear Mr. Lenderman's live shot? And what would be your general reaction to it if you did hear it? Good morning, Paul. Thank you for having me. And yes, I was able to hear um, the reporter's take on the equity survey uh, that's targeting uh, sixth through 12th graders in Poway Unified School District. The parents who I've talked to are both confused and concerned, and they're quite rightfully concerned. After all, I think a public school district has no business in psychologically profiling their students, especially the ones in lower grades. So let me clar clarify here that there is also another survey, also under the name equity survey, targeting students who are in third through fifth grades. And looking at the, uh, the survey for sixth through 12th graders, 21 of the 31 questions are related to race, gender, uh, sexual orientation, and ethnicity. And these questions, the surveys basically are pseudoscientific. The questions are subjective and the answers are not weighted. Um, strangely, a lot of these surveys that I've seen, including this one in Poway, are more obsessed about dissecting these students' attitudes toward gender, race, ethnicity, and other superfluous identities, rather than their views on how the schools are helping disadvantaged students, regardless of race or sexual orientation. And to what end is this survey? I mean, once you gather this information, what is done with it? 
uh, usually um, as what I have seen in other school districts, including San Diego Unified, um, the survey results will be used to justify more local funding uh, toward equity work, toward uh, programs such as diversity, equity, and inclusion training, social emotional learning, or culturally relevant pedagogy um, in these school districts' new local control and accountability plan. So I predict that Power Unified School District will present the survey results as a justification for more equity related work or race, uh, sexual orientation related work, and even manufacture a uh, racial crisis or gender identity crisis if necessary. And the problem with um, using the survey results from uh, these pseudo scientific questions to justify uh, district spending and new programs is that a lot of these innocuous euphemisms such as DEI, SEL, culturally relevant pedagogy, they can be easily hijacked by critical race theory and the equally fringe gender ide ideology. And I think both parents and taxpayers should be on high alert. Is it just me or does it seem like there's a dis disproportionate number of teachers that are focused on gender issues and sexual issues? It, it just seems to me like it's, it's such a front burner issue for them instead of like the three hours of the when I went through. I, I, I guess let me ask it this way. I thought we were supposed to be concentrating on our commonality and not our differences. And it seems to me parents who have that issue, this survey plays right into their argument. I, I agree with you. And uh, my reaction to uh, these so-called teacher activists is really that if they cannot do their daytime job, their full-time job, which is to sufficiently educate uh, the students, uh, they should not, they should have no business in getting into the, the students' uh, perceptions and, and, and thinking on race or gender. And it, it's just outrageous. Wen Yuan, I appreciate you getting up so early and joining us at this hour. I bet we talk again, and uh, you know, I don't think this, is, this issue is going away anytime soon, so uh, I bet we'll have a lot of opportunities to kick it around some more, okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of your day, and have a great weekend.